Have you ever wanted to know what you might need to photograph a baby at home? Well, I'm gonna share with you lots of tips and advice and some of the things that you might need. Hi, I'm Kelly Brown. I'm a newborn and portrait photographer and I've been doing it for around 18 years. Earlier on in my career, I did spend many years traveling to client homes. So I know exactly what you need and how to make it work. I'm gonna go through all of my pieces of equipment that I would take with me. Now you won't need all of these, but a lot of them are gonna make your job a lot easier. Let's start with obviously containers. If you are traveling to someone else's home, you're gonna need something sturdy that you can put all of your equipment into. I've got sandbags. These are fantastic for keeping your lighting stand and your backdrop stand nice and safe and secure so it doesn't move. I've got a reflector. Now that's gonna come in handy if I'm shooting in you know, not so great lighting conditions, or I wanna bounce some light back in to my shadowy areas. I've got extension cords, power leads for my light. And the reason that I started taking a light to client homes was because the natural light just wasn't great. It was very inconsistent in all of the different homes that I went to. But if you've got beautiful natural filtered light coming through your windows at home, you can achieve some amazing results. I've got a backdrop stand. Now this allows me to put a backdrop up so I can photograph people in front of it. But it also allows me, when I'm using my posing bag, to clamp up my blankets to create a smooth, soft background without any creases. The umbrella that I use is very large. You don't need one this big, but mine's a 180 umbrella and it's white on the inside. That means that the light's gonna bounce in and then come back out through the diffuser that I've got here on the front and that's going to create soft light. When we photograph babies, we want beautiful soft light to highlight all of their little features. Another quick tip when it comes to lighting, if you lay your baby down on the ground, make sure the light comes down across the face. We want the top of the head tilted towards the direction of light, not the chin. When the light comes up this way, we get what's called ghoul's lighting and that creates a lot of unflattering highlights and shadows. So something to look out for. I've got a heater. When you're photographing a baby, you wanna make sure that they stay nice and warm. And when saying that, I've also got a temperature gun. Now that's gonna help me keep an eye on the temperature because if it gets too hot, the baby can become overheated. If it gets too cold, the baby won't sleep soundly. So you've gotta find that right temperature in the middle. I like to keep my space at around 27, 28 degrees Celsius. But if the baby's wrapped with multiple layers on, that's going to be too hot. So bring that temperature down to around 24, 25 degrees Celsius when they're nice and cozy. I've got wet wipes, because we know there's always lots of little accidents, and I've got hand sanitizer. Now the camera I use is a digital SLR, and it's got a 24 to 70 f 2.8 Canon lens on it. That lens is my go-to and it is extremely versatile so I can get lots of different varieties in terms of using props and zooming in and getting close-up shots. I've got a backup memory card because we all, always need one of those because sometimes things go wrong. We've got backup batteries that are fully charged. I've got a stool to sit on when I'm using my posing bag and I've got clamps to help clamp up that backdrop that we mentioned before. I've got lots of supports and even some cloth diapers, which are great to put under the baby to help support them into different positions. I've got blankets to layer my posing bag. Now, if you don't have a posing bag, my advice is to use a bean bag and a teardrop one if you twist the top of it and either add a clamp or add a knot to it and then turn it up the other way, you can use the underside and put the blankets over the top of that. That's gonna create a beautiful, soft, firm surface for the baby to lay on. If you don't have a posing bag or a bean bag, using something soft on the floor and layering multiple blankets will definitely help you achieve some great results as well. I've got little bonnets, which always look very cute, and I've got some wraps. And if you'd noticed, my accessories for styling and my blankets and my wraps are all within the same color palette, and that's going to create some beautiful timeless results. So there's a lot here to consider. You don't need all of it, 
but a lot of it is going to make your job very, very easy when photographing babies in their homes. If you want to know more about how to photograph a baby at home, you can find my guide to in-home sessions at kellybrownonline.com, as well as lots of tutorials on how to get the best lighting, how to pose a baby in a prop, and how to achieve those beautiful curly shots on a posing bag. Make sure you hit the subscribe button as well so you don't miss any of my future videos coming your way.